Hi, this is Soft Cell Electrical, and I'm your host, John. Today, we're going to go over overhead wiring, lights, smoke detectors, etc. We're going to start out with smoke detectors. If you look at the diagram, you see that there's a smoke detector in every bedroom. There's a smoke detector in the hallway. The little blue dot is a CO2 detector, which is a new code. There's also a smoke detector in the office, which is new code. Smoke detectors are not required in bathrooms or closets. The red wire in the 12-3 acts as the signal wire that connects all the smoke detectors and CO2 detectors together so that if one goes off, they all go off. Here's some further clarification on smoke detectors. On the top diagram, you see that a smoke detector is in a pitched roof or ceiling. That smoke detector has to be within 12 inches of the apex of the ceiling. Whether it's on the wall or on the ceiling, it doesn't matter. It has to be within 12 inches height of the very top of that ceiling. You look at the second diagram to the right and you see hall and elevation change. When you have an elevation change, of 12 inches or more, you have to have another smoke detector. In this case, the smoke detector is in the living room, which it wouldn't matter if there was an elevation change or not, you would still have to have a smoke detector. The bottom diagram, you see the hallway, and this is a very long hallway. If it exceeds 24 feet in length, it requires two smoke detectors. Ideally, you want those to be about 15 feet apart, maybe a little bit more. Let's take a look at the new code, which is an absolute must. You see here, it gets a little bit complicated. In bedroom one, you can still have the switched light and in bedroom two you can still have the switched outlet that hasn't changed you can have either or or both moving on to the kitchen you have to have a three-way switch to the light in the kitchen one from the entry of the hallway or the living room and one from the entry to the outside that's your standard three-way setup let's move to the living room you have to have a switch at the entryway Another switch, which is a four-way switch, at the hallway. And then back to a three-way switch at the back entrance of the kitchen. There's a total of three switches that operate the living room light. Moving on to the hallway, you see that you have a switch that's immediately responsible for the hallway. You have a four-way switch which accommodates bedroom two and bedroom three, which goes over to a three-way switch, which accommodates bedroom one. So there's a total of three switches. This is all new code. And this basically operates the hallway light. Then we move to bedroom three, where we have a switched outlet and two switches for a ceiling fan. You also need a switch in the closet. We'll go over that a little more clearly. And let's move on to closet clarification. Now, generally, there's no specific code on square footage that I know of that determines when you need a light. But most of the inspectors I talk with want a light installed when a closet approaches between 60 and 100 square feet. 60 really uh, is a good number. But one thing to remember is no exposed bulbs, that's for starters, and your light source can be no closer than 12 inches from the light to the shelf edge. This prevents burning if the light bulb should fail and come in contact with anything you have stocked on the shelving there. Let's finish up on a code that's very important, especially by today's standards, and that is any room 
that have ceilings where a ceiling fan can be located or at least a light where a ceiling fan may be later installed must be ceiling fan braced with a ceiling fan approved box. There are no exceptions to this. If you have a really big bathroom and you have a light right in the middle of it, it's got to be fan braced with a ceiling fan approved box. That pretty much sums up what you need to know about your overhead. And I would recommend to watch episode number 102 and it shows you three different techniques on how to hang recessed cans, which will prove to be incredibly helpful to you. I also recommend that you watch episode number 29, which shows specifically how to mount a exhaust fan. So with all that in mind, you're pretty much ready to go on your overhead. Once again, Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.